as I said previously, I brought up um, in the introduction, House Church's introduction, um, I brought up previously, and I haven't really found much on YouTube about this, which is almost shocking. It's really surprising. Um, I, I brought up, I want to discuss House Churches and House Churches introduction. And so this will be the first video. Um, so I'm trying to figure out where to start. Um, there's so much about house churches that needs to be looked into. Um, we, I guess we could first start out with a rationale. What is the, the rationale, what is the reasoning <clears throat> behind having a house church? Why is that preferable to the institutionalized church? Um, or the institutional church? Well, one of the first things I think to look at is church is <clears throat> in modern day on the whole an institution it's kind of like you know you some people can understand this um, you know and I reference I made, I made other videos about books about um, Frank Viola who was the author of Pagan Christianity you're in a church you realize that it's not what it should be so what are you going to do about it um, you realize this is you know of a pagan origin or this is not scriptural or this is not Christian what are you going to do about it so I've referenced uh, some books by Frank Viola that I've read and by other authors that I've read about cell churches house churches and there's a technical difference, but it's really something that can be cast aside because cell churches, the way it's a lot of times understood, are irrelevant to the issue. Um, but, you know, I've been in house churches, uh, and I've been in several bad ones, and I've been in mm, several good ones. But why even have a house church? Why bother? Well, for one thing, you can dress like I do, right here, in this shirt that is going on six years old. <laughs> um, and another thing, if you host it, you don't have to leave your house. These are some practical things that are perhaps of little consequence, but something that you, you could even get out of the way. Or to start with, then just knock out, out of the way. You don't have to dress up. You you don't have to leave your home necessarily. It's more comfortable. Um, all that stuff. You know, it's in a house, so it's nicer. Um, one of the big things about a house church is you hope that it's not just a social organization, but that it's called by Jesus Christ. So I, even if, even while I'm getting on this, sub, this particular part of the house churches, the important thing is that it be an authentic group of people at church that really wants to follow Christ and you don't get that just because you're house church so it makes it even more complicated a little bit but if you go to a, an institutionalized church what do you get well you get people that file in you may know somebody, you don't meet them because they're seated already. You get the building, which is expensive, so that's an expense you don't need to have. You're buying an expensive building, um, putting up, you know, maybe a cross or this stuff. It's unnecessary. Um, there are people in there that you know are hypocritical and that you really can't address because they sit down and, and go, and they're not going to be really the address is saying, well, hey, you, you know, you cannot claim to be a Christian and live this way. You're deluding our movement because you have no intention of doing the right thing or following Christ. So that's an issue. Um, you all sit down and face the, face the front. When Paul emphasized that we were brothers and sisters in Christ, not auditors of a of a speaker or an addresser 
of a, a, you know, it's like a spectator sport, um, like football. Football, you go to see the football players. Church, you go to see the preacher. You don't go to see one another. And Paul had a problem with that. He said, you're following all these different people. You're dividing yourselves. Uh, he said, you should be acting like a family. In, in 1 Corinthians 1, he said, well, I follow this person, I follow this person. Paul said, I've left you. I've planted the seed. I've left you. You're on your own. But as a an apostle, it's my job to make sure things are going well there. And, uh, <clears throat> and things weren't going well there, so he kind of addressed that. The, the, the leader of the church, 1 Corinthians 1, was not Paul. The leader of the church was not Peter. The leader of the church was not Apollos. The leader of the church was Christ. And Christ wasn't there. You know, Paul does not reside in us if Christ is indwelling. But Christ does. And he's not here physically. So, you address him. If a preacher's misguided or a preacher's not taking care of the issues of the family of God, then that's not what the church was there was put there for. <clears throat> so the whole structure becomes questionable. Also, the the quote unquote order, order of worship, or um, you know, you get a bulletin and you're it's like it's like getting a bulletin for a play or something like that. I'm gonna go see a play. You know, this is when it starts as we get over political speech. This is when it starts, this is when it gets over. These are the speakers that will be speaking. You know, it's not a political thing where we focus on Barack Obama or John McCain. We come to listen to them. What do they have to say? We want to know because we're elect them. The church is, if the whole body matters. Not a Barack Obama, not a John McCain, not a, you know, pardon my French to those who know what I'm talking about, a Chuck Swindoll. Um, not a, you know, the, 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 the central theme is not uh, Paul Washer, for our people are Paul Washer disciples. Jesus said be disciples of Christ. Jesus said follow me. Um, <clears throat> so the whole structure is counter what the church was there for. It was there to encourage, you know, it clearly says, um, uh, do not stop meeting together as some are in the habit of you doing, or do not, do not neglect meeting together, but encourage one another. Paul says, if someone comes to your meeting from outside your meeting, then let them know that God is there. But if you go into some human organization where somebody, well, everybody walks into the church and they go through this little step of that little church step, they're a member of that church. Jesus said, you're a member of my body if you're a part of me. Or, you know, Jesus or Paul or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think if Jesus said that. Paul said that, but I mean, Jesus may have said something along those lines. That, um, that it's not something, it's not like a, a, a rotary club or... Um, Elks Club or something like that, where is if you jump through these hoops, you got it. Jesus wants to know, are you following me? If you're following me, you're welcome. If you're not, then you're gonna, we're going to run a program for lack, maybe lack of a or, or for, for a familiar word. We're going to we're going to operate like the family of God, and you can come and and, and sit there, and you can come in and participate. Um, Christian life is supposed to be participatory. Bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. But, however, we get to churches and we're taught, okay, sit down and listen to the preacher. Sing this song. Take this sip of juice and this, and this piece of bread. And there you're doing what's right. And Paul said, no, you're the family of God. You have brothers and sisters. Bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Um, you're supposed to encourage one another. If a man's gift is teaching, let him teach. If it is prophecy, let him prophesy. And this gets to the whole um, theological debate where people aren't even focused. You're already been paying attention to what the Bible says. Oh, the Bible's wrong is basically what they're saying. 
while they say they agree with the Bible. Oh, that doesn't apply anymore. It doesn't apply anymore. We've got the whole Bible now. We had the whole Bible not that long after the church was established. Um... Was not John prophesying, and the only book left was the Revelation at that time. It was about, <clears throat> it was it was written about, say say about a seventy A.D. I mean, if John was thirty when he when he was following Jesus, and the Bible was finished, or or, or in the and the Bible finished by seventy A.D. even, then, um, people had the Bible. 40 years after Jesus left. So you've got this part of the Bible that, that was valid for 40 years. Come on.